is escort gray, rather gray or white, well, compared to my trousers. <laughs> if you want to see more about the VW T-Rock facelift, tune in now, let's go. This is Thomas with Auto Gefühl. Please subscribe if you haven't done so far. And the VW T-Rock, one of the most popular VW models, will it stay that way with this facelift? Well, here is Sportier front, this honeycomb style front grille. This is also the Sportier R-Line, and that also gets the daytime running light, the secondary daytime running light, so to speak, here in the lower part in a vertical way, whereas the style model, for example, would it feature here in this circle around. Then LED is now standard optional, the so-called IQ light, that's the matrix LED. And turning indicators in the front look like this. The length at 4 meters 25 or 167 inches, so has grown just a little bit because of the different spoilers in the front and the rear. Wheels from 16 to 19 inch, these here are 17 inch wheels, so this is kind of more a comfortable pick actually. You can of course go more for a visual pick as well. Here the R-Line comes with that badge right here and we also have this black package here with the black side mirrors and also a contrasting black roof. Yeah, I mean, overall a quite likable and sporty styling, crossover style, golf platform, not too high, not too low. Option you can get the DCC, the adaptive suspension. We also have it equipped here today. Yes, the famous locks in the background are back. Long-term subscribers will know what I'm talking about. Here you can see the T-Rock facelift gets new tail lamps here, new signature. And if you have the optional matrix LED, then you also have a cascading turning indicator in the rear. Other than that, clean styling in the rear, this typical hatch style. However, <whistles> Auto Gefühl Fake Exhaust Police is right here for you because these have been identified clearly as fake exhaust and need to be punished. The T-Rock still gets the classic Volkswagen key and I think it's better than the new high glossy black one. Door closing sound. Hmm. We have heard that better. Main criticism for the interior here, hard pack at the inside of the doors. Actually quite some interior changes. Let's begin with the steering wheel. At the moment these hashtag capacitive BS buttons are not backlit. They soon will be, I'll show you how the difference is. The cool thing is the Arlan has the perforation at the sides, that's actually quite decent. But when you pick with a style trim level, you can still get normal buttons at the steering wheel. Seats here, over the more elaborated one, here with Alcantara or microfiber in the middle part. And you can also get the top sport seats for the R-Line, then you would have integrated head restraint like in the T-Rock R. So the R-Line moves more towards the R, at least if you pick some options then. It's not the biggest SUV, however, with this crossover style, you already have more comfort than in a normal compact hatch. And the seats are really very good, have some side support, also plush surface here, you can put that lower area a little bit longer. So really happy with the seats and also the overall seating position here, sticking in and out with a actually quite huge span here. Now the ignition is turned on and these buttons here are backlit at the steering wheel that looks really fancy but to control it is harder than before. General overview <laughs> here for the interior. You can see once again that perspective of the steering wheel styling wise pretty cool and also how you control it actually quite cool. Then here also new screen updates a lot of high gloss black piano lacquer when it's cleaned it looks cool, but scratches, fingerprints, and so on and so on. And here the optional Climatronic with the capacitive BS control. It looks again cool, and for a capacitive control, it is quite okay. But you can also stick with the base one. If you do not pick this option, then you have still some knobs to turn, actually. In the lower part, two USB-C chargers and also inductive charging pad for your phone. And this DSG shifting lever has um, you know, also like its backlit gear uh, view so that looks quite fancy as well and here also when you have the orbit drive you have a gear mode selector for off-road modes a standard t-rock would start 6.5 inch then with dial or r line you get 8 inch screen and optional this one 9.2 inch the 8 inch has still a knob right here and here this one completely buttonless so that's a disadvantage i think the only advantage that this one he has is that you can show the map here and in the digital instrument at the same time then because more processing power. The map itself is not that responsive. It's not the worst one. It's not a really good one. You can use it. The software updates have also made it a little bit faster but still not really responsive. 
Apple CarPlay, Android Auto is available with wireless connection. And the cool thing is here, Beats sound system is inbuilt in this vehicle and also has a subwoofer in the back. And it actually gives you a quite decent sound. Um, yeah, if you figure out the volume either here uh, or at the capacitive buttons at the steering wheel. Hmm. Oh, and what I need to show you here, the rear view camera. <sighs> the resolution for today's vehicle I think that should be better. Digital instruments are clear to read, quite nice, here in 10.25 inch, otherwise it would start at the base 8 inch one, so these are then a little bit smaller ones. And you can have different views, for example also this map view, you can also have it full screen. It does not flicker on, uh, on your real eyes, just on camera here by the way, um, but it's really hard to adjust that it, so it's, you know, a decent image but still doesn't figure it's sometimes not really possible and here my favorite view would be rather this one you know with the classic gauges um, so yeah whatever you like but I prefer rather this. When cup holders are not adaptive well it fits more for my <laughs> basement garage beeper but you know when you don't have adjustable things here or like it's something that holds it tight Sometimes the bottles fly all over the place. Then the armrest cover, it's actually quite firm, but looks quite cool with a leatherette surface. And some more space, oh, for example, also for my leatherette purse here underneath. Well, the T-Rock is not that long, and headroom-wise, it does fit with tall adults in the rear, one with a six or six of one. However, here, knee room-wise, when I'm driving, doesn't really work. The seats themselves are actually very comfortable. You have a good upright seating position here in the rear. It's just that when you have tall, 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 then it gets kind of close indeed. Yeah, and um, towards the middle part here with the huge middle tunnel, even closer now to USB C chargers you have there. The trunk, 445 liters maximum. However, if you have all wheel drive and also the subwoofer from a Beat sound system, it's a little bit less. Here, however, still usable, 78 centimeters in length or 30 inches, and in width, it's a meter or 40 inches. However, here, the cabin trolley does not fit in the vertical way, then it wouldn't close. And you can see that underneath, then here in this case, there's just the subwoofer. But yeah, for the sound system, it's of course pretty cool. And you have a two-third, one-third split, but also a ski hatch. And then you have yeah, a little bit less than one meters 50 or 57 inches in length. Engines next to the two liter TDI. On the petrol side, you have a one liter three cylinder, a 1.5 liter four cylinder, or today here the two liter four cylinder petrol engine, a turbo, and also then with all wheel drive, 190 horsepower, front plus rear. However, then on demand, this all wheel drive system. And then you can also get the 300 horsepower strong T Rock R. You can also check a video out of this when we have it on our channel. Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge with the VW T-Rock facelift. Let's put it to sports mode because the German Autobahn test is to commence. Here with the 2 liter TSI, 190 horsepower and all-wheel drive, front plus rear on demand. Also put that bigger speed in here. So and we start from about 40 kilometers an hour and let's go. And now it's struggling. <laughs> yeah, but we're already yeah, close to 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour. Oh, now it's getting like, you know, wind noises here from the A pillar. Yeah, windows really close, 200 kilometers an hour now. But really stable on the road, although it's, you know, this crossover style. And only here now at 200 kilometers an hour, wind noise have been picking up. Let's see when we drop. When is it stopping from the A pillar? Let's see. Now we're about 150, but feels really stable on the road. It's actually quite decent. Not the biggest wheels on there, 17 inch here today. And on the brakes, yeah, good and precise feeling indeed. So of course it doesn't feel as sporty as a Golf, which is a little bit lower. But here I think a good compromise, you know, between some more crossover SUV thing, higher seating position. It's actually quite decent and comfortable here in these Alcantara seats in the R-Line. Really like that. You can also get these top sport seats here, as I mentioned earlier. They are also really comfortable. So seating-wise, really good job. And the steering input is actually also pretty precise. 
Soon also I go a little bit sportier and winding um, country roads and so on, but here so far actually quite decent on the motorway. We can also hit the cruise control here with capacitive hashtag capacitive BS buttons on the steering wheel. Um, you get used to it a little bit, but it's not really very good. Here when you press resume, you have one kilometer steps up or down or set and with plus and minus 10 kilometer steps up and down. Sometimes you yeah, you know, you miss it a little bit. Uh, here now in the dark in the tunnel you can see um, the climate unit in the lower part is also illuminated so for a capacitive solution there it's actually quite decent but I also told you earlier that you can also stick with base climate units when you do not pick this optional Climatronic actually. Overall it gives you a very balanced feeling this vehicle and it is very easy to control. It is one of the vehicles you just start in the morning, get inside, don't care about much else and just start driving and it is this compromise that it's still small enough, see the blind spot monitor here as well in the, in the side mirror, it's still small enough actually for the city but it's already big enough that you can also take a longer autobahn turn with this one here. So and that's also making it so popular as I said, it is one of the most popular VW vehicles now, meanwhile, overall. Now I'm getting off the motorway here, also a little bit faster in the corner. Let's see, getting precise from the steering. The suspension is not that soft nor hard. It's actually also a good compromise. And if you have that DCC, which we have here in a sport mode, it's a little bit stiffer then. But the adaptive suspension also then you know adapts in this area and that's a good, good thing because you know you can imagine it like this so you start from the soft, softest mode and then to the sportiest mode but it's not like this either soft or sporty it's always the span you know where it moves depending on the road condition and then you just move the whole span of it and not the individual setting i hope you, you got what i what i meant by that that's actually the advantage then here of the um, adaptive suspension, so I can indeed recommend to pick this one. I'm pretty dark in the face now, right? Here we go. Yeah, with the sun, a bit, little bit tricky today, right? <laughs> so now, traffic light to green. The engine is actually also quite responsive. Um, as for the all-wheel drive, yeah, it is still a front-wheel bias. With the all-wheel drive here, of course, you have a little bit less of front-wheel bias than in this vehicle. So it is definitely more fun to drive it with the all-wheel drive. We've also a T-Rock R episode, of course, there it, you know, is even more stressed. However, it's not the most efficient engine. That would be rather the 1.5 petrol engine. Um, here the 2.0-liter TSI has more power, good punch here also on the motorway. However, then, yeah, as with fuel economy, also here with the all-wheel drive, something between 7 and 8 liters on one kilometers, that is more like 30 mpg US and 35 plus mpg UK, there's of course something better available as for the fuel economy. All right, what about some agile driving? In the sports mode, by the way, also the S shifting mode is activated. That means the gears are turned up higher, later shifting up, earlier shifting down. You're coming quite well out of the corner. Of course, you feel that front wheel bias, yes, but the rear wheels are also helping then the more you apply the throttle. Also take a look at the steering wheel. I don't have to turn it that much. Quite progressive actually and once again very nice accelerating out. It's also not that you have massive understeer or something. Yeah, it's really very well balanced this vehicle. This is of course this original Golf platform and yeah, it's, it's a very good one, you know. So the balanced handling of this vehicle is probably the coolest thing in driving. It hasn't changed with this facelift at all and this is also one of the things why it's still so popular. At any time, by the way, you can go back here to the de-shifting mode, either here with the big shifting lever. When you're here in the manual shifting mode and shift yourself, you press and hold, then you're coming back to either the S mode or the D mode, depending on which you have put in at this moment. So once again, very good result here as for the driving here also when you do some slalom. Stays really upright and always depends, of course, usually you would drive in the normal or the comfort mode. Just to have a little bit more comfort from this adaptive suspension and the sport mode then only when you do things like these, for example. If you want to see more about the trim levels, we also have a static episode here of the T-Rock, which was quite um, popular. You can see even more things in there. Well, and of course, if you think about 
maybe a little bit smaller one. The VW Tiger is also very interesting and also quite new. Check out this one.